Hello and welcome. Thanks for being here today. How have you been? I have had quite a lot going on and I have some things happening in the future that I'm really excited about. I have a couple trips coming up, one to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Pennsylvania in July. And in September, I get to go to Sedona to meet some new people. So those are going to be some fun trips. And now that it's warm, we have warm weather here in Sacramento. The city really comes alive for me because I get to go out more. I get to go to parties. I had a friend who had a recent 50th birthday party and it, they went all out for it. And I just, I love getting to spend time with friends and be in the outdoors and just, you know, have a good time, enjoy myself. And I've been thinking about my business too, in new ways and thinking about how it's going to change in the future, how it's going to evolve with me and who I'm going to be in the future which is a lot of fun and a little scary at the same time. We're actually in this episode going to be talking about change and whether or not you want to make any. My guess is um, by the time you finish this episode, you're going to think differently about how you show up every day in your life and in your law practice. This episode was inspired by a conversation I had with one of my clients around values. She wanted to do a reset. So if you're in that camp, or if you just want to know if you are living in alignment with your values, then this episode is for you. And if you just want to have more awareness of yourself and how you're showing up in the world in relation to how you think about yourself, this episode is for you too. I'm going to walk you through how to think about values, how to determine what values you have currently, and think about what you want your values to be and begin embodying them. A value is something that we hold dear to us. It's part of an image of who we are and what we want to project to the world. It's made up of thoughts that we have have about ourselves and others and ourselves in relation to the world. And most of us think that we know what our values are, but if we look closely, a lot of our actions are going to prove otherwise. And throughout this episode, I'm going to be asking you to really look for the evidence to prove up whether or not you are living in alignment with the values that you choose for yourself. For instance, if you value family, but you're spending your time at the office and not making time for date nights or time with kids, and instead you think a lot about work and focus on work and are constantly checking emails and your phone and working while you are at home wanting to spend present time with your family, there's some work to be done here to align your actions with that particular value that you have. Or if you say that you value financial security or money, but you're discounting rates or not sending bills in a timely manner or not consciously thinking about where your money goes every month using a budget, your actions aren't completely aligned with that particular value. I was thinking about this in my life as I check in with myself. Where am I not acting completely in alignment with my values and where have I really changed so that I am in alignment with the values that I want? This is important because it's easy to say that we value something, but then ask yourself whether you value it because it's a value you want to embody or is it a value you think you should have? For example, your parents might have valued having a prestigious career or value what other people thought, but do you want to adopt those because you think you should value those based on what your parents taught you, or do you want them because you want them? Ask yourself if you like your reasons for each of the values that you have, and then you can see if you want to keep that particular value. A great way to determine what your values are currently is to observe where you're spending your time, your money, and your emotional energy. If you want to see what your values are, just pull out a piece of paper and write down the top 10 values you think you have. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go through each of those and find evidence that supports that that is a particular value for you. I'm going to go through my list of values as I was doing this work. It's incomplete. Okay. I am doing this work with you and observing my brain 
as you're observing your brain. So this is something to keep in mind as you are thinking about your values, that this is going to be a process. There's going to be time you're going to want to spend on this. You're going to want to observe how you relate to the world. This is such a wonderful way to get to know yourself better and whether or not you are liking the way that you're showing up in the world. So here's the list that I came up with of my current values in no particular order. Freedom, love, that includes all the people, including myself, the planet, my friends, my family. Honesty, which I've defined as honesty with other people and honesty with myself. Financial security slash money, physical well-being, mental well-being, that means to me a peace in myself. It can mean a peace in my house. It is um, evidenced by meditation, the salt water floats I go to, infrared saunas I go to, spending time in my garden, keeping my house organized. Like those kinds of things contribute to my mental well-being. Personal evolution. So for me, this includes spirituality, meditation, coaching myself and getting coached, my business, because I look at my business as a tool for personal evolution and watching where I'm in balance with myself. I did an episode about balancing yourself in your work that I'll link to in the show notes called Feminine and Masculine Lawyering. You can check that out to learn more about that topic. Service, being of use in the world, pleasure, And when I got really honest with myself, I recognized I also value comfort because I was observing how I am in the world, which is what you're going to be doing as you do this for yourself. I love my Netflix evenings, bread, sugar, scrolling on Instagram for no particular reason, but to veg out YouTube, those kinds of things. And that doesn't mean that any of those are bad things. It's just something I noticed. And I asked myself, do I want to keep that? Is it in alignment with my other higher values, the values I want to definitely keep? The answer is no. That doesn't mean I cut out Netflix entirely or stop eating all bread and sugar. It's that I watch myself, I observe, and I ask if I truly want to be having this experience or do I want to say no because it's not in alignment with the experience of my life that I want to have. There may be days I choose Netflix because I want comfort but maybe it's not four hours, it's two, or maybe that's pleasure, right? Like knowing that for yourself, when does it move from pleasurable to just a comfort to numb out? Knowing that for yourself is so important. Personal evolution is uncomfortable. So do I want to value comfort more than personal evolution? No, right? Do I want to choose four hours of vegging out with Netflix or do I want to create more balance and self-coach myself and see where I may be numbing out today instead of feeling my feelings and maybe finding something that's more pleasurable that contributes to my other values, like going outside, going for a walk, those kinds of things. Do I want to choose that ability to step outside or meditate or read versus finding comfort, right? Even those things like reading, We can learn all of the things and we find so much comfort in learning versus implementing because implementing is uncomfortable, but implementing leads to personal evolution. So you can see where learning has its place. So if you value learning, of course, that's wonderful. We want to learn, but we want to implement too. I love the 80-20 rule where you should be like really observing, like where are you spending 80% of your time versus the 20% of your time? 20% of the time would be in the learning and 80% of the time would be in implementing the discomfort. So as you do this work, you're also going to notice that some of your values might have changed over time and to really celebrate that. It used to be that I valued hard work over everything else to the detriment of everything else. I also valued other people's opinions over my own. I used to value self-reliance, which prevented me from seeking the help that I needed to get aligned with the values I wanted to have. I like the direction my values have gone in and how my actions have become more in alignment with who I want to be in this world. And you're also going to notice that a lot of your actions are in alignment with where you're spending your time, money, and emotional energy, but they're not 100% and that's okay. That just means there's a conflicting value. 
For instance, if you value freedom, but you don't feel free in some areas of your life, there's something there to look more closely at. I was talking to a lawyer recently who said that she valued freedom. And the only time she felt it was when she was in school and she had a schedule determined by other people. And that's because all she had to do was follow someone else's plan for her. Someone was telling her what to do, which of course is the opposite of freedom. She said that thinking about making her own calendar felt less free, but that was untrue because the only time she felt free was with a calendar. She really just had thoughts she hadn't explored about herself in relation to the world. Her belief system didn't yet account for her making decisions for her own life and taking aligned action using a calendar. I know that a lot of lawyers tell themselves a calendar feels like it boxes them in, but calendars can't box people in. They can't, my friend. Only we can do that to ourselves by not giving ourselves time to do what we want and need in our lives to live in alignment with the rest of our values. This is why personal responsibility is so important to me is because I look at it as a tool to help me live in alignment with those values. The calendar is also a tool to help you live in alignment with your values. Once you've come up with a list of what you value, then ask yourself, where do you have evidence that you are taking alignment, uh, um, aligned action with your values and where are you taking action out of alignment? And this is something you sit over with, you know, over morning coffee or before you go to bed. It's something that you keep you your mind on as you observe how you walk through your day. You can do that all this week. You could just like say, okay, let me just observe how I'm behaving in the world without judgment, just observing it. If you're a client listening to this, this is something we can take deeper in our next session to help you uncover where you may or may not be in alignment with your values. So let me know if you want help with this and we'll work on that in session. Finally, ask yourself what you want your values to be and see where you can start making small shifts to be in alignment. Put them in order of importance to you and sit with this order and think if it's true that you want it to be in that order. I was thinking about my list and I thought freedom was my highest value. But when I question that, is it really true? Is it really true? And I actually value personal evolution more because if personal evolution meant taking another job to pay for something that would contribute to my personal evolution, but maybe take a little something away from my freedom, I would do it because personal evolution is something that's more important to me. I also want to keep the values that I have. I like the values that I have, but I also want to tweak them a bit to see where I can be in even more alignment with them and ask myself, okay, where might I want to make a few shifts? Now, in the example I gave of valuing comfort, I do value comfort in a way. I'm not going to go live out in the woods somewhere and start foraging for food. I like going to nice hotels and eating delicious foods. But is it comfort that I value or is it pleasure? And how do I define those two different concepts? So that line that I was talking about where Netflix might be pleasurable for an hour, but if I'm there sitting for four hours, then it's a comfort. Then it's a signal like, what am I, what am I avoiding? It's a pleasurable experience being in a nice hotel and enjoying my experience there. And it might overlap with comfort in some ways, and that's okay. Just kind of watch, observe. This is just a fun tool to get to know yourself better. I'm also not going to let comfort get in the way of higher values like personal evolution. I'm going to observe myself and see where I'm leaning into comfort more than personal evolution. And for my perfectionists out there, I see you. This is not a practice of perfection. It's a practice of getting to know yourself. Don't use this exercise as a way to beat yourself up because you're not acting in alignment with what your highest values are. Perfection does not exist and aiming for it is just going to hurt your ability to embody those values that you want to embody. Love yourself completely as you are and on this path that you are currently on. 
take this as an opportunity to get to know yourself better instead of berate yourself for not being better. And it can feel tough sometimes to do that, but the path becomes a lot easier when you accept what is and begin moving with complete love and compassion for yourself in the direction you want to go. Appreciate and focus on how far you've come to be where you are today instead of thinking about the distance between here and where you want to be. And if you enjoyed this episode and want to take this work deeper and really start understanding yourself more, come to a strategy session with me. When we work together, you take what you're learning in this podcast and you your impact, it just multiplies a hundredfold. There's a big difference between passively listening to a podcast episode and actively engaging your brain with these concepts and putting them into practice. And working with me means you're going to have a personal guide to help you implement these in a way that's most effective for you. I'll tell you more about what that will look like in your particular situation in our strategy session together. You can book one at dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I know you've got a lot of choices out there. I know you're into personal development and you want to make changes in your life. And there are a lot of ways that you can do that. So I appreciate your time and that you're here with me and that I get to spend some time with you. All right. I will talk to you again next week. Bye.